Hey, what's up, guys? It's time for another Gerald Hospital review. Before I go any further, just wanted to let you guys know I did a reaction uh, video to this the other day, but um, Chloe Lanner, who played um, No Benson, is coming back. I uh, found out yesterday that she'll be back next week, so I wonder how that's gonna go. If you want to see my reaction to that, check out that video. Anyways, let's get into the review. Um, I'll talk about that. How did I get back up? <laughs> anyway, I'll start by talking about Vanna. We got some Vanna scene finally this week. But it started out with Lucy and Valentine talking and Victor and Anna talking. Anyways, so Lucy called a meeting with Valentine because they needed to find a new face of deception. And Valentine's like, uh, not my choice. I'm like, it's a business choice. You're, you have to be there. <laughs> and then she's like, you better not send my pickle pics to Martin. And Valentine is, you know, trying to figure out what it is that, you know, why she's focusing so much on Victor and, you know, being nosy. He eventually finds out his answers. But, um, Anna was talking with Victor. Um, she's like, you know, Valentine's a different man than I guess since he's been back. And I'm like, I guess that's thanks to you and Victor, you know, all smiles. <laughs> and she asked about Charlotte and, um, um, he said that she's enjoying boarding school. And she was, and I was wondering why Charlotte didn't come home for the summer. And Victor was talking about, um, her really loving the horses, um, they have their equestrian program or whatever. And I'm like, what is up with the show and horses? Like, <laughs> like does, does the writers have some sort of horse fetish or something? I, I just don't get it. Anyway, but at the pool, Anna and um, Lucy get in an argument. First, we gotta talk about how cute Lucy's shoes were. I wouldn't be able to wear them. I'm not high heels kind of girl, but they were really cute. Anyways, <laughs> they got an argument, and Valentine sees, and he's like, mm, now he understands. <laughs> and I was like, laying there. One of my my favorite scenes this week, Lan <laughs> Lana. And I was just laying on the chair, reading her book, and Valentine just walks up, snatches the book from her hand. <laughs> and he sits there and he starts gently rubbing her leg. And I'm like, ooh. <laughs> and I'm just like, hey there. <laughs> Lordy. <laughs> I was like, we're, I guess we're supposed to assume that they're in a relationship and possibly banging, but we haven't seen it. <laughs> I need to see things to get a confirmation. This is not confirmation enough for me. Anyways, they go to Valentine's um, hotel room and not have sex. <laughs> But, um, Valentine's trying to figure out what's up, and, um, I forgot what she said. Um, Victor ends up, Victor, what is the, <sighs> I just can't, my hair is in my mouth, oh, I got my thing <laughs> and, um, but anyways, Valentine breaks down and tells Anna everything, and, you know, he said that, um, how Victor got Charlotte, um, stayed for Peter and then put her in this high security boarding school and he can only text her, he can't see her, um, he has to do things for him or he could hurt her. And I'm like, grandfather, of, father and grandfather of the year, Victor Cassidine. <laughs> it, it just, these scenes just felt like a dream to me. Like, I didn't expect. Valentine and Anna, I didn't expect Valentine to open up like that to Anna. Not like this, anyways. I just felt like something else would have had to happen before this happened. I'm not sure what it was. 
be, but I'm really glad that it's all out and open. And um, she knows that um, Valentine is the one that um, was the French what sailor soul <laughs> that mustache <laughs> that um, set up um, Jennifer Smith. So. She's like, oh, we have to help Jennifer now. He's like, no, nobody could ever know. Victor can never know that he told her and stuff. So, you know, Anna's like, she's going to figure this out. And she's like, we're going to find a way to bring down Victor and save Charlotte from you. He was just crying and all crying. I'm like, oh, my God. I'm not crying. You're crying. <laughs> and she gives him like, this short little kiss and then hugs him. I'm like, oh, it's so beautiful. They still didn't bang. That would be the perfect moment to just rip each other's clothes off. It's the sappy moments or angry moments that make for the best love scenes. I'm just saying. Anyways, but before I go any further, I just want to talk about the face of deception, Sasha. I was just rewatching on um, Wednesday and Thursday's episodes. And, um, so basically they're writing Sasha, like, they, um, what happened with Britney Spears in 2007 when she had her meltdown. And in 2008 is when they, um, named her father in the conservatorship or whatever. So that's just makes me feel that's what they're trying to do with Sasha right now. You know, because of her breakdown, especially since she, you know, went to town on the Paps car like Brittany did. Yeah, except for Sasha still has her hair, so. I just have to say that it's really stupid. And basically, the the psychiatrist told Sasha that Brandon's going to have custody of her. They didn't use conservatorship. They said custody. That's pretty much the same thing, basically. He'll be making all the decisions for her. Which is just... The writers obviously just don't know what to do with Brandon and Zasha. They're doing rip from the headline. Horrible. Horrorline. Horror. Headlines from decade over a decade ago. And it's like... No. It's just time to write the two off. They don't know how to write them happily. It's just one dramatic thing after another. I mean, I know it's a soap opera, and drama is what we need for the show to be good, but there's been no really good moment for Brando and Sasha. <laughs> like, seriously, they had really nice sex in the vehicle and made a baby, and then we barely saw them, and then their baby was dead, and you know, that's all. I mean, what else is there? Nothing. Sasha has just had problems since she's been here. And Brandon serves absolutely no fucking purpose on the show. Both of them could definitely be written out. Especially since they just um, gave a contract to the guy that plays Dex on the show. Evan something. I forgot. I think it was crazy because I just saw, I, I saw two tweets about it. And somebody retweeted his tweet, and I still forgot his last name. <laughs> but, I mean, the show could definitely use, use to lose some characters. And those are two I vote fair first. You know, they're rarely on. The writers don't seem to care. They're rarely on. So, how can we really want to invest in them, not only as a couple, but any kind of storylines they're involved in? Makes no sense. And they just go around saying, having the same conversation. It just makes, it's just really stupid. And the last thing I want to see is another ill woman being basically dominated or having her choices made based on a man. It's just, it's really, I'm over that. And I think these writers have some problem with women. I just feel like they've been rejected by women um, so damn much in their life. They're taking it out on fictional characters. <laughs> I don't know. That's just what it feels like to me. And I mean, like, they still write strong characters like Anna. But I don't know. They, at some point, the 
women get written badly more, some more than others. And it's just, uh, it's just, uh. And I guess I should go in and talk about Liz while we're at it, <laughs> while we're talking about this. <laughs> and Willow, too, she, um, yeah, she's about to fall out, and, um, and, um, Tara was telling her she needs to cut back her hours. If she's not gonna go out for her full pe pregnancy, then she needs to cut back on her hours. And Michael's agreeing, but he doesn't know the full story, of course, because he wants to be an ass to Sunny and not listen to what Willow had to say. It was cool. We got to tip Mike back. <laughs> Robert Adamson, who I think fits in better on the show than Chad. Uh, you can hate me for saying it, but I just, it just, he just feels much natural in the role. Crazily, he does, and I can even sense some chemistry between him and um, was it Caitlin? Caitlin, I forgot her last name. He plays Willow. They have some chemistry, which is surprising because <laughs> I know I don't see many people that really like um, Michael and Willow, but you know he makes he's. Michael's so annoying that he makes it sort of kind of less annoying to see him in the role. <laughs> I'm just saying. And I read that there is no word on why he um, is back this time. Um, before, they, um, Journal Hospital had um, filmed the scenes out of order. So that's why it looked like it was back and forth, back and forth. But now this time around, um, they didn't say what it was that kept Chad from working, so. Mm -hmm. But, um, Liz lost time, <laughs> and she was talking with Nicholas, and Nicholas told Finn to kick rocks. <laughs> uh, lordy. And as we saw, Ava, she got stabbed by somebody <laughs> at the boathouse, and I'm still, like, shocked, like, that really happened. I was <laughs> like, I was watching Monday. So I'm like, oh yeah, that sure really happened. <laughs> yeah, and of course they had Jocelyn find her. And I'm like, why? <laughs> That's like the most randomest person that you could possibly have find her. Lordy. And then Dex showed up and they got her to the hospital. And I'm like, this is just more pathetic ways to have them interact with each other. Just like on Friday when they're about to go through the dumpster to find Avery's um, charm bracelet that she lost at the hospital. Or she thinks she lost at the hospital. So, <sighs> Very pathetic, but there's more reason... It's no reason to have them involved in the storyline. They're not casting our names. But, I mean, I mean, well, Dex works for Sunny, but, you know, Jocelyn doesn't need to be involved in this. Just like she shouldn't be involved in any um, of the mob business. It's, it's, they should, re, should have replaced Jocelyn with Christina. It's a great opportunity to get Christina a storyline. Joss doesn't need it, but. You know, we can't have nice things, though, no, can we? <laughs> but, yeah. Um, Jordan was going around interviewing everybody about what happened. And they were talking to um, Liz. And Liz couldn't remember what happened to her or whatever. And Nicholas came in and said that they were together, giving her an alibi. And Liz was, like, all happy. It's like... You don't need to help, or I forgot what she said. But she, and I'm like, Liz, he's not trying to help you. He's just trying to give himself an alibi. And I don't think that he stabbed Ava, but I think he knows who did, or possibly even um, what's the word I'm looking for? Orchestrated. Basically, he was the one that gave the okay to do it. <laughs> or, uh, or, well, him or Victor, and they're in it on it together. Like, Victor wanted to take out Ava, and Nicholas gave the okay after um, Ava blurted out that he slept with Esme. So, you know, Spencer's mad at him. So, you know what? All this trouble I've gone through, 
with my son and husband because of Ava. So stab her and miss so she can live another day. <laughs> Lordy. But um Liz was Liz told Finn that she had lost some time and um so and that she was recalling having a fight with some woman at the top of the stairs. So I'm still they need to speed this on a little more. I mean like I'm glad that Liz has been on a lot more. You know that she's been on a lot more um the last few weeks. She's been on two, three times a week. And which I'm really happy. But they need to speed this up a little bit. Like get to the point. Like what was it that happened at the top of the stairs? Did she really kill the woman or just knock her down the stairs? And who is the woman? I want to know. Come on, speed this up a little bit. Involve more people in the storyline. Like, I don't like Nicholas, but him around Liz is okay. But, um, she does realize that when anybody confronts her about what's going on in her parents, that's when she does lose the time and stuff. And she realizes that happens when Finn has been the one that did it. <laughs> Except for that one time uh, with her and Scotty, but... You know, it's usually right after she talks to Finn. So, she, like, basically, like, you're my trigger, motherfucker. So, stay away from me. <laughs> I told her, she, <laughs> I told her she needs to get a restraining order and a taser. I'm like, I'm sure you can get them in multiple colors so they'll match your scrubs. I'm just saying. <laughs> oh, but, um, Spencer got totally wasted. <laughs> Poor thing. <laughs> <laughs> and one of the um, staff at the Q Mansion told Jordan that um, he was busy puking during the time he wrote that. And all I can picture is him with his head in the toilet. <laughs> oh, poor thing. And I'm surprised Jordan didn't get him on underage drinking or get the cues on um, serving alcohol to a minor. I guess we'll just drop that because Ava's the, um, got stabbed. <laughs> but goodness for Trina, she, um, has been admitted back into PCU and didn't, no, that's what. I can't remember if Carly or Jocelyn asked her if um, they actually um, apologized to her or not. <laughs> I wouldn't know that too. Did they apologize for being assholes? <laughs> innocent until proven guilty. And Trina was innocent the whole time. <laughs> but Trina learned about um, Ava being stabbed and wanted to go to the hospital. Uh, Victor was talking to Spencer about um, not talking to the police, you know, saying anything about um, argument between all of them, you know, stand up for family and, you know, not implicate Nicholas or anything. And if he does, he'll get his inheritance um, earlier. So I'm like, so what is his inheritance? I thought Ava was the one that gave him the money or did or is that they're not having that anymore because Ava's not a Cassidy anymore. I don't know. But Spencer went from completely hang hung over to I gotta hurry up and get to the hospital for Trina and he's just like jumps up and puts on the shoes like nothing. <laughs> just wanted to get there for his girl. Oh my god, oh my gosh. Yan gets there and Trina's looking through the window at Ava. Because she can't go in because just family. But she ends up going in later anyways. <laughs> but um, Spencer walks up behind her and he puts his hand on her shoulder. And I'm like, oh my gosh. She turns around and they look at each other. <laughs> And he's like, he was there to um, either, he's always told that he to support family no matter what. He wanted to be there for her and for Trina too. And um, wanted to be there for Ava and Trina too. And Trina's like, you want to be here for me? Yeah, because I know how much Ava, how much you care about Ava. 
<laughs> so basically, he was basically saying, I don't give a fuck about Ava. I only care about her because you care about her, basically. <laughs> still sweet. It was still a very sweet moment. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's like, she's like, you're here for me? He's like, always. <laughs> Adriana's like, oh, so you're here to, to support your dad, too? He was basically, he was like, no. <laughs> basically, like, fuck daddy. <laughs> Adriana's like, um, they do something hurt you? And he's, he didn't go into details, but he said that um, he should be thanking his dad because he made him see what he needed to, to know that he don't need to be around him. And Trina, she brushed her arm against her hand, gets her hand against his arms, and she takes his hand in hers. And she's like, Do you want to talk about it? And then it looks like he was about to say something, and then he's like, I can't even. He pulls his hand away. It's like, It's no longer your problem. And I'm like, Oh my God! Yeah, <laughs> and Spencer was <laughs> I know, uh, and Nicholas was talking to Ava, and why are you like he was about to choke her, or was, or I'm saying shit, but it really looked like he was about to choke her, like, I didn't want it to come to this, and like he was about to choke her, and Trina walked in, what are you doing? <laughs> I love Trina in this scene with Nicholas. She was just like looking at him like, you know the fucker. Makes me wonder what Ava told her besides, you know, besides her knowing the obvious stuff. I'm like, did Ava tell her anything else? But, I mean, well, Nicholas has done and said things enough that would piss off that everybody should, everybody probably would know, basically. <laughs> but then I'm just like thinking those conversations those two could have had. <laughs> anyway, and he's like, you know, whoever did this to her obviously hated her. And then he was going to leave, and Trina's like, Mr. Katz and I, it could have also some be somebody he used to love her. <laughs> so basically, Trina's on to Nicholas and. Victor is like, ugh, talking to Spencer and basically like, ugh, everything about for everything about you always goes back to Miss Robinson. Like, oh lordy, are they gonna do something to my girl? And Spencer has to break out of Pentaville to come get her or something. <laughs> oh, lordy. But, um, Trina was sent by Ava's side. It's just, ugh. Oh. It's so touching. She was just like, she wanted her to wake up. She needed her. I'm like, no. I'm not trying to cry today. <laughs> yeah, she had me in tears. And then Ava's machine started going off. And Trina came out to, you know, get some help. Um, Ava's blood pressure had dropped really low. But um, she's stable. And she ended up waking up. And Spencer and Trina had some chips. Well, Trina said she was going to get some chips, but Spencer was the one eating them. <laughs> I'm learning. But, um, Jordan wanted to talk to Ava and Nicholas didn't want her to talk to Ava. And Ava was like, I'm going to talk. She hmm. said she didn't see who did. She didn't see who did it. <clears throat> and, you know, Jordan was just looking all suspicious about Nicholas. And, um, like, um, bye. <laughs> but then afterwards, she was over here. She was listening on um, Portia and Trina. Um, Trina said that she went to go get some of Ava's stuff um, to put in her room. You know, so she had stuff that looked familiar or whatever. And Portia's like, oh, the mirror is, like, far. And Trina's like, oh, well, she's at the Met she's been staying at the Metro Court for the last few days. So that's close, so I can go there. And Jordan's like, hmm. 
So, is Jordan actually going to figure out a case? <laughs> but, really. Who, who did do that? Was it Nicholas or Victor? Or is Esme popped back up? Because <laughs> that girl ain't dead. <laughs> yeah, I've been going back and forth. Is it Nicholas that has her or Victor has her? Are they both working together and just waiting for the right time to stick it to Ava if she don't do what she's supposed to be doing? <sighs> or is she really hiding? <laughs> Somebody, um, some other people were saying maybe Ryan. I'm like, he broke out of there? I'm like, <sighs> well, I mean, as <laughs> he's a villain. Villains can get through walls and stuff <laughs> if they really wanted to. <laughs> but um Nicholas had a nightmare. Nicholas. His, his real name was Nicholas, but um, Spencer he had a nightmare. Um Esme. They were at the Savoy. I'm like, that's an interesting place. Not where not where he is now, the Magic Court or not Windermere. <laughs> Must have been a quiet night. Ain't nobody over there. <laughs> <coughs> oh, Lord. But, um, Esme basically was making fun of him. Like, oh, you try to take me down, but, uh, you still don't have Trina and you're going to prison. <laughs> Bitch. But, you know, good one there. <laughs> and, um, Esme's like, you really think Trina's going to dump Officer Six-Pack? <laughs> and all I could think about was a six-pack of soda. <laughs> you know, in the store, they have, they do have six-packs of soda. With the, um, <laughs> the plastic around them. They have the regular, and then sometimes they have those little, the little bony shot glass looking ones. <laughs> <laughs> you bitch. And then he woke up. Oh my gosh. And my Sprina tweets <laughs> on Twitter have been um, retweeting gifts talking about um, just the way he was waking up or laying in bed or something. And somebody was like, look like he was getting sucked like a lollipop. I'm like, oh my god. Y'all are a mess. <laughs> oh, but keeping me laughing, which is definitely something I needed. <laughs> oh, lordy. But, um... Uh, but I, I, I didn't talk about Cindy and Nina. They rushed over to the hospital to see Ava. Well, Nina wanted to go. Sunny's like, okay, I'll go. <laughs> It's really cool that we did get to see Lola Avery. She's so cute. She wanted one of Daddy's pancakes. <laughs> and I'm like, I would want something else besides frozen pizza too, girl. <laughs> yeah, but Nina's red dress. That is hot. Was, oh, Lordy. Was it red or orange? You know, it might have been orange. <laughs> Lord, I can't see colors this week. <laughs> But, um, Ava did tell Nina that, um, Nicholas cheated on her with Esme, so. So, if anything happens to Ava, Nina wouldn't know why. <laughs> and Sonny put Dex at, um, Ava's door. I'm like, this, like it was kind of fucked up that the PCPD didn't think to do that. I'm like, uh, someone tried to kill her. <laughs> That should have been a given, but then again, I don't trust the PCPD. I would trust um, Sunny's moss that's in um, the kitchen. <laughs> I'm sorry, Carly's kitchen now. She got the custody of the moss. <laughs> I trust the moss more than I trust a um, officer from the PCPD. And I don't know. It's like. I just kept it distracted by Carly's kitchen. I forgot how cute it was. And I was like, if they added her house, her um, living room from her and Jax's house 
to the to that kitchen. She has the perfect house. <laughs> I'm just saying. I love that kitchen when uh, kitchen. I love their living room. It's so cute. White and um yellow. Made me want to get some yellow furniture. <laughs> Not yellow furniture, yellow accessories. <laughs> But she was talking to um, Drew, so I guess they're maybe going to, I guess they're, they're going to end up being a couple eventually, I guess. But, you know, she's still holding the secret that she knows that Willow is Nina's daughter, so. But she said she wants to go find herself because she's lost everything that she's had and, um, she wants to see what her life, who she is outside of Sonny and Jason. Which I would applaud her if she actually goes and do that. But I don't see that happening. <laughs> I don't believe that they would do that to, for Carly. I think she's just going to just roll into things with Drew. And it just end up being a big mess. But at least they're missing their feelings for each other. Which kind of sucks because... They did that so easily. <laughs> and it, and Trina and Spencer still haven't said anything up to each other. Just apart. And it hurts me. We haven't even had a kiss. And Drew and Carly's had, many, had a few kisses. And speaking of kisses, <laughs> Chase and Brooklyn were kissing like crazy at the pool. I don't really care about their storyline. I'm just glad that they're finally a couple, I guess. <laughs> they're on their first date. But, um, at least they admitted their feelings. and Or, I guess, that confirms them as a couple. <laughs> but I hope the storyline ends very quickly and they can move on to something better. But, anyways, that's all that I wanted to talk about this week. <laughs> Let me know in the comments below what did you enjoy and didn't enjoy this week. And if you like this video, hit the like button and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. I hope everybody enjoys the rest of this week. The rest of their weekend. <laughs> Love y'all. Bye.